Kenny Frankor always dreamed of the bright lights on the big stage. Dancing on Broadway looks a little different when the steps are on the sidewalk. The marquee for Tony Award winning Book of Mormon is dark. So, welcome back to the Eugene O'Neill. Hey, it's good to be home. How long has it been? Since I've been here about, what, seven weeks now? What do you think? It's very empty. Normally I'm coming here at showtime, so there's, you know, people lined up, and uh, this is a little deserted. Kenny is one of millions, performers, stagehands, musicians, directors, and writers, all out of a job. I will be very sad if I never get to um, perform here again. This is Broadway, baby. This allowed me to uh, not be able to feel sheepish when I would say that I was an actor. If I don't come back, at least like this show will come back. It's a constant. There, there will be something. Something will come back. I, I have faith in that. A forced intermission. Now that entertainment as we know it has changed. <laughs> Theaters, arenas, concert halls, and studio lots, all silent. The streets of Hollywood, deserted. In life, you know this as well as anyone does, it's not if adversity is going to hit, it's when it hits, how do you react? Entertainers are eager to find a new way forward after the COVID-19 pandemic forced the industry to shutter. Finally, hints of hope. Our parent company, Disney, announcing Disney Shanghai will open May 11th to a limited number of visitors. No word yet on when Disneyland or Disney World will follow suit. What you've seen happen in Hollywood over the past several weeks is completely unprecedented in our age. Dominic Patton is a senior editor with Deadline. He says while most A-list celebrities can weather the storm, Hollywood's industry of TV and film worth more than $40 billion supports an estimated 2.5 million workers, the majority of whom are now living without a paycheck. I'm rolling now, do it again. These are often the unsung heroes of Hollywood. There hasn't been a moment since the birth of Hollywood and filmmaking that people have not turned to storytelling to escape life for just a moment. That's why we're here. For Lisa Katara, that's meant 16 years of blood, sweat, tears, and actually being set on fire. Make sure your lawyer brings you a dress or something. Doing stunts and acting in shows like Animal Kingdom and SEAL Team. I get to jump off of buildings, break glass, be superheroes. Why would I have a plan B? I have the coolest job in the world, and that's why it's been worth fighting for all these years. Just about anybody you talk to in this industry likely has some kind of a side hustle, like bartending or working in restaurants or working closely with clients for training. They can't do those jobs right now. Lisa is surviving off savings, trying to stay in shape for when the jobs come back. For others, 2020 seemed like it was going to be a breakout year, like Jurness Corchado. Everything that we've been working so hard for just stopped. All of a sudden, the life as we knew it just changed. She was just gaining traction. Lead role on Apple TV's Little America. What? You're going to lend me your social security number? I was finally being recognized. I got to see myself on these posters in New York City, in LA. But the shutdown happened, slowing her momentum. When people think about Hollywood, they think about the lights and the celebrities and A-listers, but they don't know that there's so much more than just actors on the screen. So now during this pandemic, I think it's even harder because a lot of us live check by check. I'm gonna try to put some acoustic foam panels here. Jurnest is challenging herself to adapt quickly, learning how to record and submit her own audition tapes from home. Stay back. I definitely feel like I made this big move and the sacrifices that I've made in my life to go big. It's like, go big or go home, you know? I really want to be the next Latino superhero on Marvel. But first, Hollywood has to figure out how to restart production. Going forward, film sets in a COVID-19 world will likely look very different. When you have a wardrobe fitting, there's several people pulling on you. I run into 20 to 100 people on every job that I work on. And to realistically get back to work, we must ensure that there are safety guidelines in place. An even larger looming question, the cost of safety. What are you going to do putting people back on a set if an actor gets sick, if a crew member gets sick, if there's another outbreak? That means more money and budgets. 
Patton points out if budgets skyrocket, that could mean fewer background performers. That's less people working on these jobs that rely on their incomes and deserve to be working. It's a corporate decision that definitely ensures for their profit line, but doesn't consider any of us whatsoever. How movies are made is still to be determined, but for the blockbusters waiting for release, where you will see them is up in the air. James Bond. In the height of the pandemic, studios pushed back their biggest 2020 releases by months, like the next James Bond film, No Time to Die, in Marvel's Black Widow. But movie theaters are facing mounting financial challenges, too. Patrick Corcoran is with the National Association of Theater Owners. It frankly doesn't make sense to make these movies if they don't have a theatrical release. Saving the movie-going experience is not just saving movie theaters, it's saving a piece of who we are. As states ease restrictions, theaters are figuring out the safest way to reopen. In Texas, moviegoers are greeted with temperature checks, no contact ticket lines, limited concessions, and socially distant seating. There will also be more in-depth cleaning between shows. We hope to open at the end of June and sort of roll out with older titles and get people accustomed to being back at the movie theater and then be back up as near full strength as we can in July. Universal Studios sparked a firestorm when it decided to bypass theaters, releasing the children's movie sequel, Troll World Tour, straight to video on demand. Theater chains AMC and Regal have vowed to blacklist future Universal films. They need to bring in revenue just like we would like to be bringing in revenue when we, we reopen. However, Americans have been turning to streaming services for solace in quarantine. Disney Plus topped 50 million subscribers early last month, far ahead of its own estimates. Netflix capitalizing with hits like Tiger King. It's not every day that a zookeeper went to prison for murder for hire. And ESPN scoring viewers with the documentary series Last Dance. Traditional TV shows like American Idol are getting creative. Please welcome your judges, Katy Perry, Luke Bryan, and Lionel Richie. After 18 years, the show is laying out a new way to produce its reality singing competition using more than 40 remote filming locations. One of the iconic moments of American Idol is that great line, you're going to Hollywood. Well, that's not the case anymore now. Well, I'm not going to act like that part didn't stink. I know the contestants were bummed, but what happened was just that the show was able to launch in this way, it kind of re-excited everyone. Bobby Bones is Idol's full-time mentor, a role he now has to do remotely. I think a lot of innovation comes from just necessity, right? And, and we had a show to put on. The show sent iPhone cameras and lighting kits to all the top 20 contestants. Producers have been coaching them on everything. How do you think this will fundamentally change not just your show, but the industry moving forward? I think the fact that it can be done means that it will be done, and it's going to cost a lot less. I don't think you're going to see big shows like American Idol do this uh, normally, but I think you're seeing a show like American Idol go, all right, well, we have to be the first ones to do this, so let's just do it. Broadway shows have turned to video performances to raise money for charity. Like Come From Away and Wicked. Because I knew you. I have been changed for good. But those live in-person shows that make Broadway so unique, still a long way off. We are just kind of waiting around because we will be the last ones to be able to go back to work. Why do you say that? Because I think people need to be comfortable sitting in a theater again. I would like to go back to work next week, but I think if we were, we would just shut right back down again. Kenny is confident the lights will come up again with a little innovation and a lot of creativity that's always been the magic of Broadway. You know, just reading a play over Zoom is not gonna be the same thing. And so we have to start critically thinking, how do we get that feeling of being in that space and having something be created around us? I don't have the answer to that, so I'm not saying like I do, but I think if we pride ourselves in being innovators and being creators and here we go, this is the chance, we gotta do it. I think about being in New York post 9-11 mm -hmm. and when Broadway reopened and people could fulfill that part of that spirit that lives in most of us. Are you optimistic that that moment will come? I really hope so. We had this illusion of security and it's a scary thing to be woken up from that, but it's a necessary thing. I am forcing myself to say that COVID-19 has given us this uh, 
privilege of being able to start this, you know, new world, however new or different it might be, but start it with a new perspective and hopefully with a more caring, compassionate perspective as well when it comes to any industry. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.